Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord our Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text for today is taken from Mark chapter 14, verses 17 through 26. So it is a little different than our gospel lesson today from Mark 14. Let us pray. Open our eyes, Lord, that we might behold wonderful things from your word. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, Danielle, could you help me out today? What uh, Danielle's going to do is she's going to show you this picture. Uh, this is The Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci. And it's uh, very, uh, very faded, and that's just the way it is in real life. So uh, I know you're not going to be able to get that great of a view of it tonight, but at least you could look at it later, maybe on the internet as you search for it. Okay, don't touch the screen. So you're going to have to hold it like, and not the keyboard either. Hold it like right there. See, because see, you touched the screen, so I know I go back. There we go. Thanks a lot. Just get real close to everybody so they can see that. Real close to each person, okay? So they can see that. Let me explain a little bit about this picture. It took three years to complete. It's one of the most recognized paintings in the world, with its image found on items such as carpets, carvings, and canvases. With lifelike facial expressions, unable to be captured by anyone else at the time, the 15 feet by 29 feet painting became an instant masterpiece, a last supper by the great master Leonardo da Vinci. When Leonardo da Vinci was 43 years, 43 years old, the Duke of Milan asked him to paint this dramatic scene. Now, now show everybody one more time because I'm going to explain something they wanted. I want them to see it one more time. Please. Da Vinci worked for three years from 1495 to 98, though not constantly, on the assignment, grouping the disciples into threes, two groups on either side of a central figure of Jesus. When the masterpiece was finished, da Vinci said to a friend, look at it and give me your honest opinion. It's wonderful, exclaimed the friend. Christ's chalice is so real, I can't take my eyes off of it. Immediately, da Vinci took a brush and painted over the chalice, exclaiming, nothing shall detract from Jesus. Nothing shall detract from Jesus. Now, even, that, even though that uh, painting is so faded, and it is in real life, like I said, that same way, you, the one thing you can't miss in that picture is Jesus, right there in the middle. And uh, so he, he did a great job of, of doing what he exactly meant to do. Nothing shall detract from Jesus. A great message for all of us in our lives, uh, because we get so busy with everything else, and everything else is so crazy in our lives sometimes let that be a model for us as well nothing shall detract from jesus unfortunately uh, though someone was distracted from jesus and that was judas iscariot and so he betrayed jesus for 30 pieces of silver a very sad thing that he would think that 30 pieces of sil silver was more valuable than his savior jesus christ very very sad. We read about this in our gospel, excuse me, in our, in the gospel of Mark chapter 14, beginning at verse 17. And when it was evening, he came with the twelve. And as they were reclining at table and eating, Jesus said, truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be sorrowful and to say to him one after another, is it I? He said to them, it is one of the twelve one who is dipping bread into the dish with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. Woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. So Jesus knew what was going to happen. And we see here the amazing love of Christ. We, we're going to talk about his physical torture and suffering and death tomorrow night. But here we see the emotional uh, toll that he had to suffer, you know, because we all in times of our, in our lives have uh, emotional pain as well. And so Jesus understands that. What 
could be worse than one of your own who you've spent three years with, one of your best friends, and all of a sudden he betrays you and sells you for a, a few dollars so that you will die a, a horrible death. I mean, this uh, emotional pain that Jesus suffered is something that we can understand because we do suffer emotional pain. The point is, he went through every trial that we go through so that he can help us as we go through those, those trials. So remember this, that he can heal any hurt because he has experienced all the hurts that we feel in life. It is sad, though, that uh, Judas did betray Christ. And uh, the result of that is that Jesus said it would have been better for that man if he had not been born. In other words, he chose to go to hell and <coughs> to not find forgiveness in Jesus Christ. And because of the fact that he would be destined for hell, it would not have been, Jesus said it would have been better for that man if he had not been born. The point is, of course, is that hell is so terrible that we want to avoid it at any cost. And thank God we will avoid hell because of our amazing Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, Jim, can you flip to the next slide, please? And, uh, and go ahead and flip one more. And one more. Okay, come on back. Okay, I, I, I um, don't have the text I intended to have up there. But the uh, point is that... Judas, sadly, uh, went the wrong direction. But thank God, that's why Jesus died. For all of us who do go the wrong directions, we find forgiveness in Jesus Christ because of his precious blood shed on the cross for us. And tonight we celebrate the Lord's Supper, and we remember that he instituted the Lord's Supper to us on this Holy Thursday. And we receive this wonderful gift of forgiveness in this amazing gift of the Lord's Supper. You see, uh, his Lord's Supper is tied together with Judas's betrayal. And why is that? Of course, God only knows, but, but I think that it reminds us that Ju Judas could have been forgiven if he had only believed in Jesus Christ and the blood shed for his sin. And we, we know that his sin was terrible. But on the other hand, what about David's sin? He committed adultery. He committed murder. And yet he was forgiven. And uh, the disciples, Peter, one of the closest disciples of Jesus Christ, he betrays him three times, but he was forgiven. So the point is, Judas could have been forgiven if he had believed in the fact that Jesus would forgive him for his sin, that Jesus was paying for his sin. But Judas rejected that. He rejected Jesus Christ. And we remember this wonderful gift of forgiveness of the Lord's Supper, that it happened on this night when he's betrayed, reminding us that though we did not betray Jesus like Judas, still, we do sin. We all sin in some way. We, we betray him in some way. Even as Adam and Eve betrayed God, here, God had given them everything, a perfect world. He'd given them a perfect world, and yet they betrayed God because they listened to the devil rather than God. So sad. And we betray our Lord as well when we value other things as more important than Christ, even as Judas did, valuing 30 pieces of silver as more important than Christ. How sad. So the point is, all of us are sinners, but that is why Jesus died. He shed his blood on the cross for our sin. And then he rose again from the dead, Easter morning. And because he died and rose for us, everyone who believes in Jesus Christ has forgiveness of sin and eternal life. And he assures us of that forgiveness in the Lord's Supper. And so our text goes on from Mark chapter 14, verse 22. And as they were eating, he took bread. And after blessing it, broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. What we see then is that 
Jesus has given us this amazing gift of his body and blood. Notice he says, this is my body, this is my blood. He doesn't say, this represents my body. He could have. He doesn't say, this will remind you of my body. He says, this is my body, this is my blood. That's why we take the Lord's Supper so seriously, that it is his true body and blood. He is present with us in a special way as we partake of this holy sacrament. And through this sacrament, we receive forgiveness as we see in the Gospel of Matthew. Let me read that text to you from Matthew chapter 26, verse 27. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Again, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of of sins his blood was poured out for the forgiveness of sins and he he, as he instituted the lord's supper he gave us his body and his blood in this sacrament for the forgiveness of sins rejoice in the fact that your sins are forgiven it is amazing that by the grace of god he forgives us our sins and we receive the sacrament because we have faith god has given us this faith and received this amazing gift of the Lord's Supper. Jesus then goes on to say in verse 25, Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. So you see, this was the Last Supper. This was his last time of eating with his disciples and his last meal. But he's promised them that he would eat again with them in heaven. He says, Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And so, as he gives us this last supper, as he gives us the Lord's supper, we are reminded of heaven that we will drink and eat with Christ. We will see him with our own eyes in heaven above one day. As he says, I will will not drink it again. I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. We will feast, eat and drink new in the kingdom of God one day. So we look forward to, as we receive the sacrament, the day when we will be eating and drinking with Jesus Christ himself. We will see him with our own eyes. We look forward to the kingdom of God in heaven, this perfect world that we will be living in one day. Why? Because Jesus shed his blood for us on the cross. We look forward to that glorious day then as we partake of the Lord's Supper. We look forward to the gift of heaven. And we look forward to fellowshipping with our Lord, sharing that meal together once again in heaven in a perfect way. And in the meantime, we thank God for his precious forgiveness. Now, remember as you saw this picture of the Last Supper, how faded it was, and and it's difficult to see. That's why I I encourage you, maybe you can take a look at this online. It's easy to find online if you go to uh, Google or something like that, The Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci, to take a closer look at it. It really is um, a, a magnificent piece of art. But it is sadly very faded, and the question is, why is it faded? Let me explain that to you. This is from our Professor Reed Lesson up in uh, Concordia University, St. Paul. Since its completion in 1498, the Last Supper has been falling apart. Leonardo da Vinci, always the inventor, tried using new materials for this painting. Instead of using the customary wet plaster, he used dry plaster. The dry plaster worked well artistically, but not well for sustainability. Experts have been working on restoring the original ever since. How fitting, the Lord's Supper is for people whose lives, like the painting, are always falling apart. In this life, we never get it right. Thank God we have the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, the, the painting is fading. fading. It's, uh, it's falling apart in a sense because it just wasn't put on the right surface. In the same way, We are falling apart. Our lives are not perfect. Our lives are marred by all kinds of problems, all kinds of sin. And 
the consequences of sin that are in this world today. But, again, what is most important? Jesus Christ. You remember what Da Vinci said about the, uh, the chalice, how the, the friends saw that chalice and was focusing on it. Da Vinci said, nothing shall detract from Jesus. And so though this painting is fading, still you see Christ. And what's important that, what is important for us is that we, by this painting, are reminding of Jesus, reminded of Jesus Christ. That no, nothing shall detract from Jesus. That's what Da Vinci said. We want to say that as well in our lives. Nothing shall detract from Jesus. We want to put our focus on Christ, on what he did for us on that cross, and how he gave us this amazing gift of the Lord's Supper. So let us faithfully come to his table to receive his amazing gift of forgiveness. And remember the price that he paid to give us that forgiveness, his precious blood. Let it be true of us. Let, we say, let us say as well, nothing shall detract from Jesus in our lives. And may we be grateful for this gift of the Lord's Supper and the forgiveness it brings, as Jesus said, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Amen. Please stand for the blessing. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.